Hello and welcome to this new section of your MyRotic Network Associate course. In this section, we'll be going with DHCP, the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. This is a pretty common protocol that we're going to implement in our local area networks. That's why it's important to understand how to configure a server, how to configure a client, and also another feature that is called DHCP Relay Agent. By the end of this section, you will be able to configure a server, a client, or an agent in your local area network. Let's start with the definition of the HCP, and then in the upcoming classes, we can go with practical activities. We'll go one step at a time. The HCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. We know that any device connected in a network, for example, if we have a laptop, and the laptop is getting wireless signal or is connected using a cable, one switch or to a router. If we require that device to establish network connectivity with other devices, we're going to need an IP address. That IP address can be assigned using two different ways. One is to use a manual process, and that is called a static IP. Or the second one is to use a dynamic IP. And to do that, we are going to use DHCP, so the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. So we're going to use dynamic IPs in our devices. We're going to require a server. A router with router OS can be a server, a DHCP server, that is going to be providing IPs. Those IPs will come from a pool of IPs. So in that pool, we're going to have multiple IPs that potentially can be assigned to that PC. So that the ACP server is going to receive some messages from that laptop. The laptop is looking for a DHCP server. The DHCP server is going to take one of those IPs and it's going to offer that IP to the laptop. And there will be four messages that will be exchanged. So we'll analyze those messages just in a bit. But the whole point here is that we have a device acting as a server, and we have a device acting as a client. After going with all that uh, DHCP process, that PC is going to get an IP address. DHCP, additionally to the IP address, can also offer the subnet mask, the gateway, so basically the router where the traffic is going to be sent if that device is trying to reach remote networks. Also, we can have uh, DNS information and some additional options. So we'll explore that uh, in our DACP server class. But the idea is that we have DACP providing IP addresses to those devices. DACP was defined on the request for comment 1541. But then there was an update, and that was the RFC 2131. DACP is recommended to be used in our local area networks, so that is in trusted networks. There is no security built in DACP. We are not going to use DACP to provide IPs on internet, for example. So in that case, we are going to use other set of protocols. But for local area networks, we commonly are going to use DACP. DACP works within a broadcast domain. So that's quite important. So if uh, we have a router, so let's say that we have this router over here, that is ARG1, and the router has multiple interfaces, and we have that interface, let's say that is ether one so we can have a DHCP server running on that interface. And here we can have a switch, and then we can have multiple devices. So that is going to be one broadcast domain. If we have another interface like Ether3, for example, there is going to be another broadcast domain. So in a router, every interface is going to be a broadcast domain. There is an option to bridge some interfaces, but we are going to see that in the next section. At this point, we'll assume that every interface in a router is going to be a separate broadcast domain. There are some security risks that we'll explore later. For example, let's say that I have a router and the router has a connection here on Ether1 and we have a switch 
And then in that switch, we have multiple devices like PC1, PC2, and then we have PCN over here. And that interface is running at the ACP server. Let's say that one of those users is also configuring at the ACP server in one of those devices. So in that case, we are going to have two servers in the same broadcast domain. But remember that in a router, you can have only one DHCP server in one interface. So here, we can only have one DHCP server. In the broadcast domain, you can see that we can have more than one. That is not a good practice. But in that case, there are two DHCP servers. So if that PC is requesting an IP, the IP can come from that server or can come from the unauthorized server. There is also a security feature that we can use to block those messages, and that is called DHCP snooping. So in that case, we're going to say this is the trusted DHCP server, and this is unauthorized. We're not going to allow that device to assign IPs to our devices in the local area network. So that's basically the whole point with DHCP. If we have a client, so in this case, we have a laptop. We are connecting that device to the network and we have dynamic IPs on the interface, then that device is going to look for a DHCP server in the broadcast domain. And to do that, it's going to send a message that is called the discover message. So basically, that message is trying to look for a DHCP server in that broadcast domain. That message is going to be going from the port UDP 68, and the destination is going to be the port UDP 67. So that the port that the ACP is going to use, that in the, on the client side and that on the server side. So let's see how that packet looks like on Wireshark. So I will post the, this link that I'm going to use here just below the class when we come to this website. So you can see here a packet capture from the ACP. So here we have the first message, the ACP discover message. And if we check the different headers, so you can see that this is using UDP. The source is 68 and the destination is 67. Remember, there's a tip for the exam. The source port on the ACP client is UDP 68 and the server is listening on the port 67. So we can clearly see that here. So that's at the level 4, the OSI model. Then if we check the IP information, layer 3, the network, you can see that the source is the IP0. And that is because there is no IP on that device. That's the purpose of the ACP. That laptop is trying to find an IP. It's looking for a DHCP server that is able to provide an IP address. So that's why the source is 0. And the destination is the broadcast. You can see all 255s. And that is because the laptop or the DHCP client has no idea about who the DHCP server is. And basically, just going to broadcast that message. And eventually, if we have a DHCP server, that is going to be listening on UDP 67. And it's going to receive that message. And then it's going to process that message. When that message is uh, hitting the server that we have here, then that server is going to send a message that is called the offer message. So basically, that server is going to check the pool with IPs, and it's going to see if there is an available IP, and then it's going to offer an IP to that DHCP client. So let's see how that offer is going to look like. So if I go back here to, to the Wireshark capture, we can see that the server got the discover message, and then the server is going to reply with an offer. If we see now at the transport layer, the source port is 67, and the destination is 68. So basically, those ports are flipped. So now the server is sending that packet to the client. If we check the IP header, the network layer, the source is the IP 192.168.0.1. So that's the IP that that DHCP server is using. And the destination, you can see that is 192.168.0.10. So still, that client has no IP, but the server is sending that uh, 
IP that potentially is going to be installed in that client. Remember that we are now in a broadcast domain, so the IPs are not used to forward traffic. Basically, what it uses is the MAC address. Then you can see here, this is going from the server's MAC address to the client's MAC address. And that's why the client is able to receive that, MAC, that uh, frame, that offer message, because it's going to its MAC address. It doesn't matter the IP at that point. If we check the DHCP information, if we go in that packet, you can see that the server is basically telling, okay, I have this IP available, 192.168.0.10. The next server IP is 192.168.0.1. And that's the DHCP server. And you can see here the client MAC address. And basically here, additionally, the server is offering the mask for the subnet. There is a renewal time. Basically, if we see the least time, that's one hour. So that IP will be allocated for one hour to the device, but that device needs to renew that IP when it's reaching the half of the least time, that is 30 minutes. And then you can see here we have the DACP server identifier. This is information about the server. This is the IP of the server. And basically, this is the information that is coming from the server to the client. So now the client got an offer. The first message this court was looking for at the ACP server. Now one server is replying with the offer message. So the client is going to receive that message. And then the client needs to request that IP. And still at that point, the client is going to see that there is an IP that has been offered to it, but is not going to install that IP. First, it's going to request that IP to the server. It's basically going to say, OK, server, yes, I'm willing to use that IP. Basically, that's the request message. Then the server is going to receive that message. It's going to check. It's going to make a last verification if that IP is still available. And then it's going to send a message that is called the acknowledgement or ACK message. And basically, that message confirms, OK, client, you can install that IP. So now you are able to use that IP, and that client is going to start using that IP after the ACK message. This process is commonly known as DORA because we have discover, offer, request, and acknowledgement. So let's see how those two messages look like. So let's go here to Wireshark. If I come to the request message, so remember this is the client telling the server, yes, server, I want to use that IP. And then this is coming from the port 68 the client going to 67, the server. And you can see that still the client is using the IP0. And the destination is still the broadcast. And then we have the MAC address of the client going to the broadcast MAC address. But if I check the DHCP information, this is a request message. And if I go in the content, you can see that still the client is not using the IP. But the client is requesting that IP. You can see requested IP address, 192.168.0.10. So basically saying, I want to use that IP. And that is the server identifier, 192.168.0.1. Remember that even that we can have only one server in one router's interface, we don't have any restriction about the number of servers that can be connected in a broadcast domain. So that means that we can have more than one server Probably there is a rogue server connected to the switch, and then that client can get an offer from more than one server. And basically, the client is saying, I'm interested in the subnet mask, on the router, the domain name server, and NTP servers. And after that, the server is going to say, OK, you can start using that IP. And that is the ACK message going from the server to the client. And after that point, the client is going to install that IP address. And this is how the ACP is going to deliver IPs dynamically in our broadcast domain. So in the previous case, uh, let's say that the IP was 192.168.0.10. The least time was one hour. And the renewal time is 30 minutes. 
So after 30 minutes, that client is going to renew the IP address. And to renew the IP address, is simply going to send the request and the acknowledgement because now the client knows who is the HTTP server, knows what is the IP that is using. So it's simply going to send the request message to the server and the server is going to acknowledge. And then it's going to extend the time for one hour. If after one hour, the client hasn't received a confirmation from the server, then the client will go with all the Dora process again, looking for another DHCP server. And this is how the dynamic host configuration protocol is going to help to deliver IPs to those devices without requiring a manual configuration in every endpoint. In our next class, we'll start with the configuration with client, server, and then a DHCP relay agent. Thank you, and I see you in the very next class.